Today on Judge Faith, two brothers sue for their security deposit. The day that we moved in, nothing was cleaned whatsoever. No paint, uh, stove completely filthy. It was just a wreck. But the landlords claim the brothers caused excessive damage to the home. I was just in shock of the condition of the house. You've kept the entire security deposit. In addition, you're saying that they caused $6,000 in additional damages. How are you going to prove that? And later, two ex-lovers have some unfinished business. For about the past 12 years, we've been in a relationship. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> How did you come to, again, shell out more money to Mr. Jones? I guess I kind of got tricked into that one. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiffs Chad and Keith Epstein are brothers who are suing their former landlord for $1,950, the full return of their security deposit. Defendants Carla Chadwick and Manuel Castro claim the brothers damaged the home. They are countersuing for $6,001 to make the repairs. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this case is Epstein and Epstein versus Chadwick and Castro. Thank you, Barbara. Uh -huh. Chad Epstein? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You and Keith Epstein yes. are suing the defendants Carla Chadwick yeah. and Manuel Castro? Yes. For $1,950, the return of your security deposit? Correct. Yes, and you are countersuing for $6,001 for damages. You say they caused to your unit? Yes. Correct. Is this a house or an apartment? House. Okay, and how large is it? It's four bedrooms and three bathrooms. At some point, you leased this house from the defendants. Correct. Correct. Tell me how you found it. I believe Craigslist. And how long did you live there? Two, two years? Two years. And the two of you were roommates? Yes. Correct. Describe the house. How was it when you moved in? The day that we moved in, uh, nothing was cleaned whatsoever. No paint, uh, stove completely filthy. Uh, it was just a wreck. I mean, he just he had just moved out. No cleaning was done whatsoever. Okay, is that true? We were told by Chad and Keith that the house was fine to move in because we were there a few days before the other tenant left, and the other tenant, they received the full deposit. Did you inspect the house and the condition of the house? when the prior tenant moved out before these gentlemen moved in? No. What were the circumstances of you moving out? Did you give them notice or did they ask you to move? No, they, they asked us 45 days previous to, to leave. They weren't going to renew our well, lease Well, you guys are point. dragging us along because you were telling us that you wanted to buy the house, but you at, couldn't at come up with the money to buy the house. absolutely. I was not going to spend that amount of money on a house that's well, worth at best Then you should have told us I did. That's exactly what I told you. You drug Danny. us on for two Be months. And then the Stop talking. Thank you. Miss Chadwick. Why did you ask them to vacate the house? The end of the lease had come. Okay, fine. Now, did you do a walkthrough with them? Yes. They did not. No, they did not. She did a five minute, just walked around the house real did quick. Did she say anything to you about the condition of the house when she did the walkthrough? No, not at all. Did you? I did not say anything about other than just listen to him explaining, and I was just in shock of the condition of the house. I was actually speechless. What did you explain to her? The one children's room that was painted, it was a little bit on the flamboyant size with a, a hot pink and that, that kind of color. Year old daughter. Did you talk to them about painting various colors before you did I it? I spoke with Maddie about it previous that we were going to do some darker colors going through. Is that true, sir? No, ma'am. I'm sorry. Okay, let's look at the plaintiff's photos first. That what is a, this a photo? That was a before picture of the cabinetry that was in there. We just upgraded it, sanded, painted to that. The cabinet was oak stained and shellacked. And then rusty when we and cracking. Got to the house, it was spray painted, I think, because it was all over the grout, all over the tile. Okay, it's let's look at your mess. photos that you submitted. That's their handiwork. That it is looks the like cabinet. Spray paint. Also the so closet. who painted this? I did. Okay. But it wasn't like that when we left by any means. Okay, so <laughs> you the water think... damage on the bottom was absolutely there, but that spray paint on the bottom, I didn't spray paint it. Okay, next one. It photo? wasn't spray paint, that's crazy. <laughs> what is this? That's my daughter's room. That's a closet door. 
She wanted stripes. What's your problem with this photo? That room was painted one solid color that would be appropriate it, for it any kind of What color was it? White. Okay, next photo. That's the trash they left behind. And in fact, the city was knocking on the door saying, we're here to find you because we have had enough of their rubbish in the yard. And we said, This was outside in the yard? Oh, yeah. And that was some of it. Your security deposit is $1,950. Right. And you've kept the entire security deposit. In addition, you're saying that they caused $6,000 in additional damages. How are you going to prove that? Coming up, accusations fly. They're trying to get us to remodel their house so it was ready to be on the market. 1950 you know. is not going to be enough money to remodel your house. $6,000 that you're trying to get us for. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. And later, two ex-lovers battle it out. So you never had a discussion before you never. went into the tax preparation never. who was going to pay what? Not enough, never. Not true. Excuse me, but I'm not done. Plaintiffs and brothers Keith and Chad Epstein claim they are entitled to a full return of their security deposit. Defendants Carla Chadwick and Manuel Castro say not only are they entitled to keep the brothers' deposit, they're countersuing for the cost of repairs beyond the deposit amount. So let me explain something to you. There is what you call normal wear and tear mm -hmm. that happens when someone lives in a home mm -hmm. for two years and there are things that are over and beyond normal wear and tear. And then there's the issue of you proving to me the damages that they caused versus the prior tenant. So looking at your estimates that you provided to the court, you provided a list. By the way, has someone moved into the house? No. They're selling. They're, they're selling the house, and they're trying to get us to, you know, remodel their house so it was ready to be on the market. Nineteen fifty you know? is not going to be enough money to remodel the house. Your six thousand dollars that you're trying to get us for. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. Okay, so you provided a list to the court of twenty-six items you are charging the plaintiffs: three thousand three hundred dollars for carpet damage. I want to see proof that they, it will cost $3,300 to repair the carpet that you say they damaged. Your Honor, the, uh, the carpet, we haven't replaced it yet because we're waiting for the new homeowner to pick a color. But the carpet has to be replaced. You just want me to take your word for it that they damaged every inch of carpet in the entire house and not a prior tenant. First of all, when they moved in, I went ahead and hired a cleaning carpet company to go out there and shampoo it. No, you didn't. And in addition, that. how no. do I know that you're going to go in and replace all the carpet if you're selling the home? The home is on the market now, right? Well, yes. Okay, so you've been showing the home as is, correct? Right. Okay, let's go to the next item, which is over $2,600 to repaint the house. Show me proof that you have paid for the entire house to be repainted. Well, the problem is here that when you paint one, two rooms, in this case it's two rooms and two bathrooms, you cannot match the rest of the paint of the house. So therefore, we had to paint the whole house. They painted two rooms in the house in a different color that you didn't approve of, Two correct? rooms, two bathrooms. The rest of the house you painted because you wanted it to all be consistent. The rest of the house, Okay, though, so they're not going to be charged for you repainting the entire house. May I see yeah, that yeah. invoice, please? And we only charged them a percentage of just the rooms that were damaged. We didn't say that they were responsible for the entire bill. We just divided it up from two of the bedrooms and two of the bathrooms. On your invoice you did? Mm -hmm. Okay, right. because this, truth be told, I could print this off the internet in two seconds and write anything on this type of invoice. I was hoping to see some type of letterhead from some type of company that came in and did over $2,600 worth of painting. Here's my issue with this. You had a tenant prior to them living in this house you did not do a walkthrough with that prior tenant, and you did not assess the damages to that home before they moved in. So when they come into court and they tell me the stove was really, really dirty, you can't say that it wasn't, because no one walked through the house before they moved in. But you've listed all of these charges, and you're saying they did all of these things, and I don't know that, and you don't have a way to prove it. So the things that you can prove are the items that they admit to doing, which is painting those two rooms according to the lease. You should not have done that. You have to get special permission. You say you did. He says that you did not. In addition, the paint job that you did on the sink, it's not great. You say it didn't look like that the when you left? The bottom I mean, the sink itself Well, I don't think they came way. in and spray painted black paint <laughs> on the floor after you left. 
So there are clearly some issues here and some things that they have to do as a result of you living there beyond normal wear and tear, but it is certainly it is certainly not $8,000 worth of damages that you can prove here in court today. I am holding you responsible for repainting two of those rooms. So for that, you'll be responsible for $750. In addition, you are also responsible for $200 in cleanup fees. You left mattresses, you left debris in the yard. It's not their responsibility to clean up those items. So based on that, you're responsible for $956 in damages. I'm ordering you to return a portion of their security deposit in the amount of $994, verdict for the plaintiffs. Plaintiff Barbara Mapson says the defendant duped her into paying for his tax services. She's suing for $251, the cost of the tax preparation. Defendant Clarence Jones Jr. says the cost of tax services was a gift from the plaintiff, and she's only suing him because she is bitter about their breakup. Ms. Barbara Mapson? Yes. You are suing the defendant, Clarence Jones, for $250. You say he owes you for the cost of tax preparation services? Yes. How do you know the defendant? I've known him since 1968. Our families were friends, and I dated him during high school, and then when we got older, we went our own separate ways. But what has your relationship been like with the defendant over the last several years? We've been friends. We've helped each other out doing difficulties, talking back and forth, sometimes financially. Has he helped you out financially, or has it been the other way around? It's basically been the other way around. He's done some things around the house for me. I mean, I paid for materials and whatever. He's basically done the labor things, nothing major. You say that he has sort of a, a history of borrowing money from people. Well, he wasn't always working steady. You know, we helped him out, his family and, and I did, just trying to help him get himself together so he could stand on his own. And is there any reason, sir, why you haven't been able to stand on your own, as she says? <laughs> well, I have been standing on my own. I don't know where she's getting all this from. <clears throat> I have been unemployed a few times, but I have worked on the side. I, what kind of work do you do? Uh, right now, I'm a truck driver, over the road truck driver. Okay. I have done uh, home renovations and remodeling and stuff like that. Like she said, we were high school sweethearts. Uh, and at the high school, we separated. She went her way, I went mine. And then about 25 years later, we ran to each other again. We dated off and on. Then I moved to from Philadelphia to Atlanta, and she was still living in Jacksonville. And we stayed on relationship. We kept seeing each other. And we got together, and she'd come visit me. I'd go visit her. Coming up. You're saying she moved to Atlanta because of you? Yes, I Is would that be. true? <laughs> oh. Kind of, sort of, yeah. Well, because I asked you before, you told me that you guys were just friends. Plaintiff Barbara Mapson says the defendant is a deadbeat who mooches off friends and family. Defendant Clarence Jones Jr. says he and the plaintiff have been in an on-again, off-again relationship for years. We engaged in a relationship for about the past 12 years. For the past see, 12 years, you've been friends or in a dating relationship? We, that's, that's not true. <laughs> 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 well, which is it? We were dating for the last 12 years. Okay. Okay. Uh, she bought the house in Atlanta, I guess, about seven years ago. You're saying she moved to Atlanta because of you? Uh, yes. I Is that think. true? <laughs> oh. Kind of, sort of, yeah. Well, because I asked you before, you told me that you guys were just friends, but... Well, we were just friends, and then it just developed. I was going through a divorce, and mm -hmm. he did, he helped me out with some things, but afterwards, he just wasn't reliable or anything. I found out the true person that he really was. What do you mean by that? Well, he had an apartment, he lost that, he lost his job, and then he thought he was going to move in with me, and I'm like, I don't think so. And you said that there was an incident with a Sears credit card. Right. He... You were in a relationship at that time? Yes. Was that uh, a loan or a gift to It him? was a loan. Okay. And he paid most of it back. I didn't get all of it, but I got a majority of it back, so I was satisfied with that. Your Honor, um, <laughs> we were in a committed relationship, and I okay. did pay her back. Okay, but it wasn't easy getting your money back, though, right? No. That, I mean, that, that was the issue. That's what she says. I paid her back every time the statement came through every month to make the payment on the credit so card. So it wasn't it's difficult? Different. She didn't have to ask you numerous times no, about her money? Not. No, she did not. No. She would remind me that the payment that's, was due. That's that, not that. true. 
Because she submitted text messages in this case, and I reviewed them. And I know mm -hmm. that she had to ask you well, she several asked, times. She basically pestered you to get the money from you to pay the Sears card. Well, that was something that she didn't have to do. That's what she chose to do. Well, she <laughs> chose to do it because you weren't paying her back, sir. I, I'm not, I'm not going to be <laughs> smart, but she did remind me when it was due. Did you ever loan her any money? Because no, it seems uh, like all the money was going from this side to this side. I've asked her maybe twice for money to help me out with something. But the other time, she volunteered to do this stuff for me. I never asked her for anything. I'm More curious, than... after going through that with, with the Sears card, how did you come to, again, shell out more money to Mr. Jones? Well, I guess I kind of got tricked into that one. It was the 10th of April, so taxes had to get done by the 15th. He said that normally he would do it on his computer, but being over the road, he really couldn't get a good signal and whatever. So I'm like, okay. So we went to get our taxes done. And then when the preparer got finished, I went to pay him. And he said, well, are you paying for both? And I went to say no. And he says, pay the man. The defendant told you pay the man. Yeah, he says, pay the man. So the preparer So why didn't you me. say no? Well, I mean, he kind of caught me off guard, and I didn't really know what to do. So I said, well, OK. And when we got outside, I let him have it. I didn't want to make a scene in the store. But I told him, I said, I didn't really like the way that you did things. So you never had a discussion before you never. went into the tax preparation never. who was going to pay what? No, that's never. not true. Excuse me, but I'm not done. <laughs> he says, um, yeah, I told him, I said, you could at least ask me. So you felt put on the spot in that moment. I, I was. Okay, and you have a different version of what happened. Yes, I Tell do. me about that. <laughs> Ms. Mapson just recently got divorced, and we were in a relationship for the past 12 years when she said we were just friends. That's not true. I have done stuff for her in the house, and it's not minor work. I've done some major repairs in the house. Well, and what does that have to do with this case? Well, this what I'm saying, we had done stuff for each other during this whole time. And now, so the conversation when you were getting the taxes done, according to you, was what? Oh, uh, I, I was having my taxes with me. She said she was going to file hers. I said, well, I got to do mine online. She said, we can get it all done at the same time. So I told her, I said, I don't usually go there because it costs me money. Were you getting a refund? I never get a refund. I owe money. So my refund goes to pay off a debt that I have. It's been like that for the last 10 years. Oh, so you owe my, everybody, a, including the government. No, no, for previous marriage. <laughs> you happened. don't pay anyone back. Now, this time, <laughs> um, the man did the taxes. And then when she got the bill, she said how much it was. Then she said something about the amount. And your understanding was that was a complete gift. She was doing something for you like she'd done in the past, and you didn't have to pay her back. Right. And so when did you learn that that was a problem, that she wanted you to pay her back? When I got the paper for civil court. So you never heard <laughs> anything else about the taxes no. before then? No. That's not true, is it, sir? And now, Judge Faith rules. You want to tell me the truth about what communication you had with her before you got served with court papers about the taxes? I didn't have any communication with her. OK, you have a text message, ma'am? You want to show yeah, me? I got a lot of text messages. Show me the text message about the taxes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beautiful thing about text messages these days. Oh, a lot great. of things are in, in writing. And so when you say to me, I was shocked. I got sued because I had no idea that she wanted me to pay her back for these taxes. And that's not true. The plaintiff sent you a text message asking you when that you were going right to here. pay her back right for the tax preparation services that she paid for you. You don't recall getting this text message? No, I don't recall that, no. OK, well, that's convenient memory loss. <laughs> Based on the past and the effort she's had to go through to get you to pay her back, I don't know why you would ever lend the defendant anything else, but everyone has that one relative in their family, that, that one, usually it's an uncle, and you know when they call you and they want to borrow money, you're never going to see that money again. And I have a feeling, sir, that's probably the case with you. Based on the text messages that I've looked at between the two of you, I do believe the plaintiff is telling the truth about what happened at the tax preparation services that day and that you did agree to pay her back. I'm going to award you, ma'am, your full judgment, what you're asking for, $251 plus your court cost. Have a good day. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.